Hello, St. Francis community. Um, we are here at another version, another series of our stories of faith. And today we're actually turning the tables and I am actually going to interview Emily because um, she has a great story of faith that we want to share. And it kind of has to do with our year of St. Joseph. So uh, Pope Francis declared this the year of St. Joseph. And so we're, we're going to be presenting a lot this year to really help make St. Joseph more known here at St. Francis. And so we're going to start that with this great story of faith. Um, so we're going to find out how your life has been shaped by this yeah. relationship that you have. Not with just Jesus and Mary, but also our great patron, St. Joseph. So um, to get us started, just tell us maybe a little bit about your faith life before uh, you learned more about St. Joseph in your life. Yeah, absolutely. So I came to know St. Joseph in college. Um, so before college, I would describe my faith life as pretty, um, pretty, what's the right word? On fire. I, I was a pretty religious kid and my dad and my mom will say that um, they always thought it they was like it was a little odd you were a little you're very religious in high school <laughs> and but they were like well we were very lucky and very blessed that that it kind of stuck like the faith life stuck father Mike Schmitz in a homily once said my conversion story is that I was Catholic and it worked <laughs> and or I was brought up Catholic and it worked and that was really my my parents just raised me in the faith and they um, instilled a lot of values of faith especially my Catholic faith in me and so up to college I would say I had a pretty healthy faith life pretty robust faith life however you know was still immature and there were a lot of things that I hadn't been exposed to yet growing up in a small town here in Iowa there's just things and opportunities you don't you don't get to experience and so when I got to college I really started learning more about the saints, more about um, Eucharistic adoration, more about discernment, and that's really the three things I think that brought me to St. Joseph. So, yeah. Okay, well, I, I would love to hear, like, so how did you encounter St. Joseph, mm -hmm. and um, just, you know, what are some of the changes in your life that happened because of this encounter. Yeah, absolutely. So my, in college, I went to the University of Kansas and Rock Chalk Jayhawk, <laughs> and they have a wonderful Catholic center. It's one of the best Catholic centers at a secular university in the nation. So I was very lucky to have that support in my faith going through college, especially at a secular college. And at the college were the Apostles of the Interior Life, which are a group of nuns. They're based out of Italy, but there's um, American and Italian, and they're from all over the world, that their charism is spiritual direction and um, helping people foster a healthy interior life with God. And through their support and guidance, I was shown um, a very how to pray, really, and how to lead a really fruitful prayer life, especially through adoration, they also really encouraged those of us who were juniors or seniors to discern our vocation. Where you, are you called to be uh, in marriage? Are you called to be in religious life? Men, are you called to be priests? How is God calling you um, in, in this journey in our faith? And so I was, I was asked and encouraged to join this discernment group my senior year. And one thing that they also encouraged us as we started that, well, I, so I said yes, spoiler, I said yes. Okay, fine, I'll discern. I'll see what God wants me to do with my life. If he wants to be a nun or a mother, wife, whatever. And so as we started that, that journey, they encouraged all of us starting that journey to find a saint, find a patron saint. And we had these really great little prayer books called Conversations with God. Father Mark has them, BTW, and um, they're really awesome. And that's, I just, you read a few pages every day, and I was, I remember asking God in prayer, God, okay, which saint do you want to journey with me through this discernment, through this time? And the very next day, I opened up my prayer book, just to the day I was on next, and the top of the page said, go to Joseph. Oh. And the whole meditation that day was on St. Joseph and his, um, 
how he guided and protected and led the Holy Family um, in in the Bible and in, in their in their faith. So it was a really blunt yeah. <laughs> introduction to Saint Joseph. <laughs> well, I think that's so neat because I know for me I didn't really think a whole lot about Saint Joseph. Yeah. But when you do, like you just said, how he guided and protected yeah. the, whole, the Holy Family, and gosh. I think sometimes we underestimate his role Absolutely. in Jesus' life and in Mary's life. And really, they entrusted themselves yeah. to Joseph. Yeah. So who better to entrust, you know, a journey like that to Amen. than the same person that the whole family <laughs> entrusted. So that's amazing. Yeah. So, okay, now you, you know, found St. Joseph. He's mm -hmm. the patron saint of this discernment process. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about, you know, how he changed your life going forward yeah so I started learning all I could about St. <laughs> Joseph which because you know you go to the Bible there's not a lot so you have to look for a lot of ex external resources and I so I read um, John Paul II has a great encycl encyclical called Guardian of the Redeemer and I read that to learn more about St. Joseph I asked people that I um, knew and trusted what their relationship was like with St. Joseph and so we just, he started becoming like a dad and he's a carpenter. My dad's a carpenter. Oh, cool. So I just really, I was like, I fell in love with him. Like, like he was my own father and it was just really beautiful. So, but I discovered a novena. I was so into novenas in college. <laughs> like I was praying one all the time. And I thought, well, why not? Let's just pray a novena. I can, it was at the beginning of this discernment year. I could just ask him and a lot of a lot of my friends were doing this as well where you pray novena to your saint and you ask them for a very specific sign when you discern your vocation as like a sign from God and the reason we wanted something specific was so that you couldn't doubt it like if it was such a specific sign they you, they didn't want you to be um, I say they the the nuns they were like well if you're gonna ask for a sign you should ask for something very specific so that you don't doubt it or question, oh, is this really of God or not? So good advice. Yes, very good <laughs> advice, especially for college students. Yeah. And I prayed this novena and at the end of there in my prayer I asked for a single white feather. Just why? I have no idea. No idea why. It just came to my mind. But it's Holy Spirit. Exactly. <laughs> Holy Spirit is the wild goose. Maybe that's what it yeah. was. Um so a single white feather upon discernment of my vocation. So I pray this novena, and this is like August, and I bunker down, this is a year long process, a year long discernment, so I'm ready for the, the long run. And it was about October <laughs> that I went to a conference and just things that happened before the conference that kind of made me think something was coming up in my prayer life, God was gonna reveal something big, and I went to this conference with my friends we were staying in a in the basement of a church and the the rooms in the basement were all named after different saints and there was one room named to holy family and you thought i was going to say saint joseph yes. didn't you yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> not saint joseph the whole holy family and <laughs> exactly i was like ah oh, perfect and because i knew i had to find joseph yeah. when i got there and so i found him in the holy family room and so I started praying and there was this, there's a statue of the Holy Family and across from it was this picture of Jesus and he was handing, had his hand out like so, and, and it was a heart. And in, in my mind, at that moment, it represented my heart and he was offering me this heart and it was gestured toward the Holy Family. And I just heard the voice of God clearly say, like, this is what I want for you, like the Holy Family, this is what I want will you accept it? And I was like, yes, absolutely. But I wasn't super smart. I didn't quite connect what I had just done and said in that moment right. because I was just so caught up in the moment. <laughs> I got carried away. And if you can believe that, I would do that. <laughs> so I went to bed just feeling really great and woke up the next morning, like just really great. And as I was getting ready, uh, my roommate Anna and friend Anna was sleeping in the, her sleeping bag was right next to mine. And as we were getting ready for the day, she just picks the single white feather off my shoulder that had come from my feather pillow. Oh, just one, there was no more, just one single little white feather 
that she picked off and I was like, oh, again, not really thinking, not connecting anything. And it wasn't until morning prayer, we got to the conference and it was during morning prayer that I started to think about the events of the night before and this morning. And that's when I finally connected together like, oh my gosh, God just asked me to be in the Holy Family marriage and Anna picked, and I said yes, and Anna picked this fi single white feather yes. off my shoulder this morning. And I was like, ah! <laughs> Come on! Yay, God! I think God was up there going, yay! She got it! <laughs> but and you so, did, so yeah. I did, yeah. Thing. So, uh, So it was really beautiful in that moment. And my spiritual director, thankfully, was at the conference with us. So we were able to steal away 30 minutes and process it and talk about it and it was a really joyful moment and it was a Saturday which is the joyful mysteries when we prayed the rosary it was all about following the holy family in the life of Jesus um, through through the joyful mysteries of Mary and I think what it really gave me was a sense of peace in that moment of like okay I know the next step you know I know I'm not supposed to enter a convent I know that my, I need to start preparing now my heart for marriage, which God gave me the perfect saint because he's also yeah. protector of purity. Um, and I could also start asking Joseph to pray f uh, for my husband yeah. and be, it's because he is the model husband. And so he's someone that I've always gone to when I feel I need protection, when I feel I need um, a more pure heart or you know if I want to pray for my husband um, I'm not married yet it's been a long time I've been waiting but I know um, that Joseph is still with me and I think this is the most phenomenal thing about it all is I think God knew I was well I don't think I know I know God knew I would wait, be waiting and there's a lot of temptations that come up when you're a single young woman waiting to be married and Joseph being a protector and guardian, especially of the Virgin, he was just, he was my, he's been my protector and guardian throughout these entire years. And anytime I've doubted, anytime I've had a little, some wavering of like, God, really, is this really what you want from me? Did I discern wrong? What's going on? God will always give me a moment where he shows me like the beauty of marriage and reinforces that's what I want for you and then after that I'll see a feather oh. I'll see a single white so feather it's, it's a continual oh. sign that's that of like just wait um just wait and like just persevere and Joseph's been with me that entire journey I think I think like you said he's the perfect saint yeah. for this whole situation and, and you know I, I feel like look at his life I feel like there was a lot of waiting for him yeah. you know and and he waited on the Lord and did what the Lord yeah. asked him to. You know, he followed mm -hmm. and prompted. And I just can't imagine, you know, what it was like to have his marriage life go off course a little bit. And then, you know, <laughs> now he's a carpenter and now he's in exile in Egypt and then he's back. And yeah. I mean, there was probably, there had been a lot of waiting, like, okay, I think you're going to want us to go back, but when is it? You know, right. kind of, like waiting in Egypt and, and all that. And so I just, I still feel like, you know, such a man to, who was faithful and waited on the Lord and accepted that maybe life wasn't exactly how he was thinking it was going to look, mm -hmm. but yet just trusted that God was doing what he was going to do and follow his plan. So yeah, yeah I think perfect saint for you. And I'm so excited this year of St. Joseph and for our St. Francis community yeah. because there is so much richness when it comes to St. Joseph's life Amen. and what he can teach us. You know, you already mentioned who, he's the protector of purity. He has so many yeah. names. So many gifts. One of my favorites is the Terror of Demons. Oh, absolutely. So That's as we go one. through this year, I think we're going to get to start digging <laughs> into those names. And I really encourage our St. Francis community to to, to study, to learn about yeah. him. You know, he's the silent saint. He never says a word in the Bible. Right. Um, but yet he says so much without saying anything. And so um, there's just there's going to be a lot of great things that we're going to learn about this year. So, I'm so excited for of, what's to come in the St. Francis community, especially with St. Joseph. Yeah, and today's the solemnity of yes. St. Joseph, so we're, we're premiering this Praise on God. that solemnity. So we really encourage you to 
you know, take time today to pray. St. Joseph, you mentioned the novena. Mm -hmm. And sometimes novenas end on the feast day, but you could, you could start, start it. it. So there's several novenas to St. Joseph mm -hmm. out there. So go find one if you have something to pray about. We recommend yeah. that you do that and start today. And go to Joseph. Yeah, go to Joseph. So mm -hmm. thank you again for joining us, and we look forward to meeting you at our next Story of Faith. Thanks.